Hey guys, in this video, I thought we might take a couple of minutes and talk about my rack. Nope that one. So this is my current server rack. This is what I've been using for a while um, and, and I am stoked to have been able to, to, to work with Echo Gear with getting this rack and, and growing into this rack and then outgrowing this rack and looking for just a little bit more. So uh, so this is actually two racks uh, from Echo Gear um, and it, it, it does an okay job, but uh, it's all open air. And uh, if we get down into the nitty gritty of it, like if I come over to the side, uh, it just, it's all open. I mean, it's an open rack. That's what it's, that's what it is, right? It's an open rack. And I just wanted something that was going to kind of enclose things uh, and just kind of give things a more polished look since uh, this is, you know, right behind me. Uh, like if I, if I pan over to the right, right, right here is where I sit when I'm making content. So this is right behind me. And uh, I think it's time to, to kind of close it up and make it look, like I said, a little bit more polished. Hey guys, just got a new package delivered uh, right there. You can see it behind me. Uh, that is from Sysrax. And uh, I actually picked up a new rack after having seen Techno Tim's video about the new uh, the new awesome rack that he got. And then I saw the price on it. And the reality is I'm, I'm cheap and I didn't think I necessarily needed a lot of the automated features that he got with his. So uh, I went ahead and picked up the, um, the, the, the more dumbed down version. Uh, no disrespect intended by saying that, but it just doesn't have a lot of those advanced features. So, uh, um, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on here. I'm gonna kind of walk you through some of the steps that I go through and talk about the process that I go through to get this thing set up. Okay, so here we've got, like I said, three packages. There's the little one over there on the, on the end. Doesn't weigh much. I'm um, just gonna sit there for a minute. This one here in the middle up front, uh, considerably heavier. So I'm gonna guess that there's probably some tempered glass and some steel in there. Um, and then there's this one here on the back that again, doesn't weigh much, uh, but it is fairly big. So I'm gonna guess probably just some rails, that sort of thing, or some some, some corner posts, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, what I did notice though is uh, there was, <clears throat> this happened in shipping. I'm hoping that uh, that nothing actually got damaged in here. I'm gonna have to take this, take all this all this tape and all, or take the box apart basically and see what happened. But I think I'm going to do kind of all of the unboxing off camera. Uh, we all know how to use a pocket knife and a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna get that part done get all the parts laid out and then uh, we'll take a look and see uh, what the end result looks like there. Okay, so first big box is open, unpacked. Uh, we've got a side panel here. We've got the front panel over here. This is actually glass, I was right. Right, so that is the, the glass front panel there. Uh, another side panel over here. And what I can only assume will be a back panel. Uh, I haven't got far enough to get into the instructions yet, but that's all there was in uh, in that first box. And I will say that it was very, very well packaged. Uh, everything was wrapped nicely. Everything had, you know, extra bumpers on the actual box itself uh, for impact um, resistance and that sort of thing because of the glass that's in there. So uh, I am actually super glad that they overpacked this box because I can't imagine having to replace uh, glass like that. So uh, that's the first box out of the way. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second box. Okay, so second box, this one right here, that's the one that's got the, uh, the big hole in it. Whoop. <laughs> Caught that with my foot just in time. Uh, basically, it was the uh, front and back of the frame. And then over here, uh, wrapped up in, in this wrapping here, we got some corner posts so that we can have our rails and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's all there was in that. So I'm going to assume then that last box over there is going to be the top and bottom. Um, and I have a feeling that this is going to go together pretty easily. Um, and I think, I think th this was in that first box, and I think maybe it's got some instructions in it. Um, it looks, yeah, that looks like instructions. So you know, we'll see if these translate uh, to to this new rack. Uh, so let's get that, that last box over there opened up and uh, kind of see what the end result is. So the, uh, the third box there almost got the best out of me, but I, I managed to get everything out of it. Uh, so basically we've got uh, back here, uh, I apologize, there it is. Um, right here we've got the, uh, the bottom of the unit. Uh, we've got a couple of shelves to go inside. We've got the top of the unit, even though this doesn't have um, the auto on and off with the fan and all of that, this does have a fan in it. And that is that is quite the fan configuration there. To, um, over here, we have a power distribution unit. So let's see if I can help smart the bag, maybe. Yeah, so just, just a, a power distribution unit there, um, just single-sided. Uh, so I dig that, appreciate that that's in there. Then, then down here, we've got um, some latches for, for the doors, or yeah, uh, we've got some caster wheels here, uh, we've got the assembly screws, we've got feet, we've got 
jack screws. Man, they uh, they did not skimp out. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, some keys. Some keys. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So now I think it's time to um, kind of clean up my area a little bit and see if I can get this server rack put together and kind of go through that process and see uh, how easy it is to get put together. And uh, I'll see you on the other end of that. Except I may have updates in the middle, so I don't know why I said that. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing done. Okay, so that is step one, getting the two side panels top and bottom put together. And that is what has been accomplished here. I, I lied, I didn't clean anything up before I started, but uh, it's all kind of put together here. Um, the top and bottom, like this was, this, was, this was a dream to put together, but I also like to put together Ikea furniture, so maybe I'm just a little weird, but uh, it's upside down. I'd have one little, one little mishap here where the hole wasn't quite lined up, but everything else, flawless, no issues whatsoever. Um, but I think while I've got it upside down and I've got the, the ability to have the feet exposed, whether I put the, the feet or the wheels on, because uh, it does come with both, uh, that's actually, I think, step six. Uh, step three and four. Six, yeah, six is cast your wheels and feet. Uh, I'm just gonna skip to that right now because I don't wanna flip it back over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the feet and wheels put on and then we'll go back to uh, to step two. Okay, so I've got all of the feet on and you can see I've got that caster on there. Um, and I did have a little bit of an issue. This, there's just something along this particular corner where things just don't quite line up. And if you look, just a little manufacturing defect, not a huge deal, I can work around that. Okay, so uh, all four uh, feet are on, all of the casters are on, all of this looks good. I was able to just use my screwdriver and, and pop those uh, those holes open a little bit to get the screws to go through. Again, nobody's gonna see it once it's upside down, but I think we're gonna be just fine. Okay, so we have our, our racks in here. Uh, I ended up having to move these because the next step was to put in this tray. And yes, this is technically upside down, but I wanted to make sure that if I drop something, it wouldn't roll off the back, whatever. So I inverted it and I'm okay with that. Uh, and what I did notice, however, is that this tray, the, the two that come with it are not 24 inches. So uh, all of the effort that I uh, put in to put these in these corners was for nothing. Um, I ended up having to do some more measuring and then bring these in and get it all, um, uh, you know, screwed into the bottom and the top on both sides to make sure that this would work. But uh, that adding this shelf, I didn't actually plan on adding this shelf, but adding the shelf actually added some more rigidity to, to the whole thing. So actually really happy with that. Um, so the next steps will actually be to turn this around um, and uh, put the back on here. Uh, also, you'll notice because of how far in this is, we've got you know, we've got, you know, uh, quite a bit of space here for, you know, like a power distribution unit or something like that. So I may actually put that in next and then put the back panel on. So back panel is on just six screws, two at the top, two in the middle, two down there at the bottom. Also, uh, these do have uh, wall mount uh, points. So if you wanted to you know, mount that to a stud or something, there are already holes set up for that. So just wanted to kind of bring that to your attention if you weren't sure. Okay, so when you get to step seven, at least in the case of this particular rack, um, and you're, you're getting ready to put this locking mechanism together for the front door, and you can't find this part, and you have rearranged everything looking for it. Um, <clears throat> it's screwed into the back right there. It's those two screws. It's already there. I, um, you know... This is totally a me issue because um, I didn't look at it real carefully, but um, but yeah, that's that's where it is. So uh, if you if you if you run into that situation where you can't find that part, it's because it's attached to the latch. When you're putting this assembly together on the back of this rack, um, and you can see this little uh, washer here. It looks like this. There's two of them on there, uh, but you can change the direction that uh, that the, the the handle swings by changing how these are set on here. Um, and, and I just, I thought that was kind of a cool little idea that they've got there. So you can have it swing in or out depending on what works best for you. Uh, I originally had it set it swinging in and I was like, no, I switched it. And now the handle like swings out so that it comes out this way instead of out this way uh, when I want to open it up. But that's, you can actually switch the direction of the handle with those two little washers. One eternity later. So this is my new 27U Sysrax cabinet. And I, I picked this up after having watched Techno Tim's uh, video about his new Sysrack cabinet. And as soon as I saw his video, I knew I had to make, or I knew I had to buy uh, one of these cabinets for myself. So I did some research. I figured out which one I wanted and got this one. 
the overall assembly process for this was very, very straightforward. Um, I only ran into two issues, if I remember correctly. Uh, the first was actually um, at the bottom, or at the top when I was doing it. I was working on the, the casters and the legs, and there was just a little manufacturing defect that I had to overcome. And then, uh, once I got everything flipped over and got uh, to the point where I was putting in uh, these vertical racks, of course there are four of those, one in each corner, um, I had originally pulled them all the way forward, uh, basically up to where that LED light is, and that made it so I couldn't close this door. Uh, and I ran into a bit of a, a snag there, so what I did was actually I just put in a shelf near the top, and I put in a shelf near the bottom. I unbolted all four corners from inside here, and then was able to shift it around. I didn't have any of this stuff in there, let's just be clear about that. Um, but I was able to use uh, the shelves that I had put in there for structural support so I could get it centered and make sure that the door would close. And once I did that, I was able to get everything kind of screwed back together and uh, got it all put together. And it's just been amazing since then. So I've had this rack for a couple of weeks now, and you may have even seen it in some of my recent content. And I wanted to kind of sit on this for a minute uh, and, and get an idea of whether or not I had any complaints. Now, I do have a couple of complaints, but uh, I truly believe that these are a me issue and not not an issue that everybody else is going to have. Now, if you'll notice, there's a fan right there, and I dig that as a 120 millimeter fan to exhaust hot air out the top. And I love that it's there. And it came included, it absolutely came included, but one little issue. Oops. <clears throat> that, uh, <laughs> that fan is a little bit louder uh, than is practical for in my recording space. And I think that is definitely a me issue um, and I can fix that pretty easily. So this is the power plug to that fan on the top. Uh, if I come up here, you can actually see I've got a power distribution block uh, in there that I can tap into. And I think if I get some USB fans, uh, I can power them off that block and uh, get more airflow and less noise uh, up here to get better better cooling throughout the unit. That's, that's the first change I'm gonna have to make to this uh, is replacing that fan. And, and there's actually a, a spot in the bottom for a fan as well uh, to get better airflow uh, at a much lower noise level. So my other issue um, is, is related to the side panels in a sense. The, both the left and the right side have these, these panels that just pop out really easily like that. However, if we come around to the back and we take a look, um, there are six little screws across the back. One here, one over there, two in the middle, two in the bottom. Um, in fact, you can already see that I don't have a screw in that side because I dropped it when I was doing some cable management the other day. And um, I would have liked to have seen the back have the same uh, kind of panel as uh, the sides have just for um, just for ease of use, not having to have a, a screwdriver with me when I need to get into the back of the case. So as I mentioned, this is a 27U rack. Uh, this is kind of the base model of the rack and I am super, super thrilled with it. Uh, but let's kind of talk about what's going on inside here. Across the top, uh, the first U that I've got up there uh, is a TP-Link uh, SG1024, uh, which is just a 24 port rack, uh, switch. Uh, it's unmanaged, there's nothing special about it, but it's there if I need it. It's not even currently plugged in. Below that, I've just got a patch panel uh, with keystones in it, so I don't have to do any punch down or anything like that to add additional um, devices to my network. Uh, below that, I've got a TP-Link TL-SG3428X that um, has, uh, that, that's kind of the brains of everything here. Uh, it is a 24 port, one gig switch with four 10 gig ports over here. Below that, I've got three uh, Zimaboard 832s that are managing my Proxmox high availability cluster. Uh, I've got a Synology uh, DS1621XS Plus down there below that. Uh, that's kind of where all of my, the stuff for my home kind of takes place. Below that, I've got uh, a TerraMaster uh, NAS right there, as, as well as the device that I'm running all of my Chasm stuff on, the little mini PC. And then to the right, I've got a couple of um, Raspberry Pi is doing a couple of different things there. One um, manages the monitor that you often see behind me on top of the rack, and then the one over to the far right is just an Open Media Vault 6 setup on a Raspberry Pi. I've got a couple more uh, NASAs down there below. Uh, the one on the bottom left is the actual um, backup for my Synology. The one on the right runs my Plex server and nothing more. Uh, and then of course, across
across the bottom, I've got uh, a trip light uh, UPS to uh, make sure that if my power goes out, nothing else uh, goes off immediately and I'll have time to get in here and shut everything down. So this is absolutely not something I needed. This is not something that I needed to, to make my, my system perform better or my network perform better, but it sure does look nice behind me. Uh, and that was, honestly, that was a big selling point to me. It was a big selling point to my wife is this is, this is part of the set that I sit at and make these videos. And I thought it just looked nicer to be lit up and kind of match the cohesiveness of the rest of what I've got going on behind me. If you're interested in picking up one of these Sysrack systems like I was after watching Techno Tim's video, I will have links to everything in the description. I will also try to put links to as many of the different items in that rack as I can remember to put down in the description as well if you want to pick any of that up. Um, but I think with that said, I do want to wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.